Istanbul is Turkey's largest city. It's the heart of Turkey's business and cultural life. The country's largest port and home to more than 12 million people. Byzantium had a superb location on the Bosphorus, the broad strait that connects the Black Sea with the Sea of Marmara and the Aegean. Roman Emperor Constantine I chose Byzantium as his new imperial capital. He ordered his builders to construct a great city of wide boulevards, spacious public squares and grand palaces. It was designated as the New Rome in 330 AD and named after him, Constantinople. Two centuries later, in 537 AD, Emperor Justinian the Great inaugurated his greatest building project, the Church of the Holy Wisdom, or Hagia Sophia. Set on a hill overlooking the Bosphorus, right where the pagan temple of Byzantium once stood, the great church was the largest and most magnificent building in the entire world at the time. The Byzantine Church of the Holy Saviour of Incora, built in the 11th century, is very different. A small, beautifully decorated church that was built as the centre of a monastic complex. Located near the city's massive land walls, it boasts the finest Byzantine mosaics in the entire region. The frescoes in the Paraclesian Chapel were the product of a new Byzantine art movement, which paralleled the Italian Renaissance. The church is now a museum. Near Hagia Sophia was the city's Hippodrome, a place for public games, tournaments, chariot races and special events. Along its spina, or central dividing line, are the great relics of the past, an Egyptian granite obelisk brought by ship from the Nile, a bronze serpentine column once topped by three serpent heads, the column of Constantine, which in Byzantine times was covered in plates of gleaming bronze. The armies of Sultan Mehmet II conquered the imperial city in 1453, putting an end to the Byzantine Empire. The Ottoman sultans beautified their new capital, constructing great buildings that rivaled those of the Byzantines. The Blue Mosque, built by Sultan Ahmed I in 1616, was set next to Hagia Sophia, so that people could compare the two artistic achievements. The Sultan endowed his great imperial mosque with many other buildings to serve the people. Fountains, a health clinic, a soup kitchen for the poor, a Turkish bath, a theological seminary, living quarters, shops and storehouses. Topkapi Palace, known as the Seraglio to Europeans, was the home of the imperial family and the centre of the empire's government. Constructed between 1465 and 1478, it was expanded and modified dozens of times over the next four centuries. It is a beautiful, livable place of gardens, pavilions and sumptuous royal chambers. Many of them are decorated with priceless Turkish tiles. The most popular section of Topkapi is the Imperial Harem. Legendary for its luxury, romance and intrigue, Mozart wrote his famous opera, The Abduction from the Seraglio, about it, and many other artists have let their imaginations fly with visions of what went on there. Located on major trade routes, Istanbul has always been an important commercial city. The Grand Bazaar, with its 4,000 shops, is among the world's most fascinating markets. It's truly a small city in itself. Nearby on the Golden Horn is the Egyptian, or Spice Bazaar, known in Ottoman times as the place to buy exotic spices and herbs to be used in cooking or as traditional medicines. Crowning a hill overlooking the city is the Suleymaniye, or Mosque of Sultan Suleyman the Magnificent, the largest of Turkey's imperial mosques. Built for the empire's greatest sultan, it is the masterwork of Mimar Sinan, 
Turkey's greatest architect. The region around Istanbul is filled with fascinating places to visit on day trips. Take a fast ferry boat voyage south across the Sea of Marmara to visit Iznik, known in ancient times as Nicaea. Iznik is known today for its agriculture, but it has a deep romantic history. Ancient Nicaea was an important political, cultural and commercial city surrounded by powerful city walls which survive to this day. The early Christian church held two important ecumenical councils here. At the first council of Nicaea held in the year 325 at the church of Hagia Sophia, theologians set the stage for the adoption of the Nicene Creed. A short drive south of Iznik brings you to Bursa, a large and growing city clinging to the side of the Bithynian Mount Olympus. Bursa was already ancient when, in 1326, the Ottoman sultans chose it as the first capital of their rapidly expanding empire. They beautified their new capital with fine public buildings, including the Ulu Jami, or Great Mosque. Dating from 1396, it is the oldest Ottoman mosque still standing. A quarter century later, the Green Mosque was built. Its style is different from that of the Arab-influenced Ulu Jami, the Green Mosque and neighbouring buildings, a royal tomb, a theological seminary and a soup kitchen for the poor, give us a glimpse of what Ottoman architecture would achieve during the coming centuries. Since ancient times, Bursa has been at the centre of Anatolia's silk trade. Much of the trading takes place in the historic Kozahan. The ultra-fine silk thread is dyed and woven into brightly coloured Bursa scarves, shawls, blouses and other garments. Perhaps the most beautiful products of all are the fine Turkish carpets woven of pure silk or a blend of silk and wool. West of Bursa's city centre is the suburb of Çekirge, famous for its hot mineral springs. The Romans enjoyed these baths, as did the Ottomans, who restored and improved the facilities and in a few hours you'll arrive at the Dardanelles, the historic strait which connects the Aegean and Mediterranean seas with the Black and Marmara seas. During World War I, Winston Churchill sent a huge Allied fleet to force its way through the Dardanelles in order to capture Istanbul and reopen the sea lanes to Russia. Stout Turkish resistance halted the fleet and the invading army but the cost in casualties was horrendous for both sides. The Allies suffered more than a quarter of a million casualties and the Ottomans an equal number. Overlooking the southern mouth of the Dardanelles stands ancient Troy. There has been a settlement here since the Bronze Age. The poet Homer tells us the Achaean Greeks attacked the Trojans more than 3,000 years ago because beautiful Helen had been abducted by a Trojan prince. Modern historians believe the Ten Year War was probably fought over control of the Dardanelles. Whatever the cause, the Trojans lost. They couldn't resist dragging the Achaeans, great wooden horse, into their city. At night, the Achaean soldiers hidden inside the horse crawled out and opened the city gates to the invaders. Troy was sacked and burned. <laughs> 